With WKUF News, I'm David Jackson for Tuesday, April 26, 2016. Michigan State Police Captain Chris Kalensky says that the state is close to having a water filter in every Flint home. Ron Fonger of the Flint Journal reports that nearly 90% of homes and apartments in Flint listed as active water customers have been visited and have at least one water filter. Captain Kalensky, the Deputy State's Director of Emergency Management and Homeland Security for the Michigan State Police, says that the filters being provided were selected because they are designed to filter lead and the intent of the door-to-door delivery is to ensure that everyone in the city has a filter. According to the captain, some residents have not been reached in the citywide outreach efforts and appear to not want to be found, adding that they have yet to contact some residents despite going to some homes repeatedly. Accusations have been made against the police for using the door-to-door sweep as a means of finding and arresting wanted people. However, Captain Kalensky reiterated the point that the police were given direct orders that the outreach program was to be used to purely deliver filters. Officials with the Michigan State Police are using so-called online surveillance to monitor comments being made about the Flint water situation on social media. Gary Ridley of the Flint Journal reports that after a Copper City man allegedly made threatening remarks on Facebook about the Flint water situation, the MSP attempted to initiate criminal proceedings. In connection to those comments, as well as threatening comments against other state employees, the UP man was given two years of probation after pleading no contest to attempted felonious assault following a 12-hour standoff with law enforcement. In an email to the Flint Journal, Shannon Banner, a state police spokeswoman, said that in the interest of protecting the residents of Michigan, the MSP monitors any incidents that have the potential to result in criminal activity and or violence. A pair of public meetings to discuss the water credits due to Flint residents has been scheduled. A press release from the city of Flint says that the meetings are set for Wednesday from 5.30 to 6.30 at the Hasselbrain Community Center on Home Avenue and another on Friday from 5.30 to 6.30 at the Haskell Community Center on Forest Hill Avenue. The meetings are being held to discuss and answer questions about the upcoming credit on Flint residents' water bills. Additional public meetings are expected as the statements reflecting the water bill credits are mailed. North Korea's latest missile test has put money being sent back into the country from outside of North Korea at risk. ABC News reports that approximately 150,000 North Koreans live abroad, mostly in China and Russia, and are believed to send back up to $900 million annually. According to a State Department official, North Korea's export of labor allegedly generates revenue for the government and subsequently the government's military program. Although the U.S. has strong sanctions in place against the DPRK, further pressure from the U.N. could be used. Aaron Klein from the Brookings Institute, a think tank in Washington, notes that the banks facilitating transactions used to send money into the country could be pressured to have to choose between either working with North Korea or working with the rest of the world. The DPRK reportedly launched a submarine-based missile this last weekend, adding to the list of weapons tests conducted by Pyongyang in recent weeks. And according to reports, activity has been detected at a nuclear weapons site last week, indicating that the country may test another nuclear device. Last week, a State Department official said that if the DPRK conducts another nuclear test, The U.S., Japan, and South Korea could take unspecified defense-related measures. For more information about today's stories, visit WKUF.FM. I'm David Jackson.